Well, uh, Newcastle United are travelling down to Australia to take on the A-League All-Stars in May, and fan voting will have a large role in selecting that All-Star team. That public vote closes next week on Monday the 15th of April, so to give you a little helping hand in making your selections, we're going to give you our A-League Men's 2023-24 All-Star team of the season. So these are the rules. Uh, it is a 4-3-3 formation that was dictated by the APL. There's no minimum players per club or anything like that. We've just got starting 11, and then we're going to pick four extra under-23 rising star players as well. Uh, for the purpose of, of this selection, we're not worrying about finals or logistics or who might not be able to play or anything like that. Uh, but we've all put forward some nominations for each position and we're going to talk them through and create one group all-star team. So we're going to start in goal. And I think most of us are on the same page here. But Christian, you have thrown out just a, a second option to keep things a little bit interesting. Uh, I'm going to start with Alex Paulson for the Wellington Phoenix. Now, as Stan, I told you guys before we went to air, according to Footmub, his goals prevented statistic, which is the sum of all the XG that he has saved over the course of the year, uh, that is number one in the league with 12.6 goals prevented. Now, number two in the league is Daniel Vukovic with 7.0. So that is a, a huge discrepancy. And for me, no one has earned their team more points in the league than Alex Paulson has for the Wellington Phoenix. But Christian, give us somewhat of an argument for Philip Curto at the MacArthur Bulls. Yeah, I didn't want to make this selection too boring because I think we can all agree that Paulson is the number one choice. But I went with Curto because he's got actually uh, the most saves in the league with 113. Uh, so for me, you know, he stepped up a lot in a lot of games this season where you know, he's literally won MacArthur points with, I think that game against the victory at Amy Park, a real highlight. He was literally, um, you know, man of the match. He really stood up in the big moments. Um, the team's conceded 44, which sort of takes the gloss off a bit of his, you know, a bit of his shine. But, you know, to make no mistake, he's been terrific all season, but it has to go to Paulson. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Paulson locked in. Now, for the centre-backs, we have three nominations. Brian Kaltak... Damien De Silva and Marcelo at the Wanderers as well. Now, oh, it's tricky. I think Marcelo and De Silva represent similar kind of profiles, both good on the ball. Both have been known to get forward and score important goals. Marcelo probably at the start of the season where De Silva's come in, goal-scoring form in the back end. Will, I'm probably leading towards Caltac as a lock and then one of those other two. What do you reckon? I think that makes sense, yeah. In terms of revolutionising their own team, the Caltex, you know, come in and, and just fully lock down that back line for the Mariners. So, yeah, he gets that starting spot and he, he's just a player you want to see, which is which is what the All-Star team's all about. You just, you, you'd, you'd come to a game to watch him and that's not not often found for a centre-back. Jacob, De Silva or Marcelo? Yeah, I, I'm going to go with Marcelo. And um, I, look, I've been critical of him on this podcast a, a few times, uh, especially with some performances recently. But I still think he's genuinely one of the best centre backs in the league. He scored two goals this season. Obviously, we, we spoke about the you know the threat that he poses in attacking phases, especially from set pieces. He's a massive aerial threat in the box. But he's you know a traditional centre back as well. He's got a 63% total dual win rate. So that's 64% on the ground, 62% in the air. Basically nothing gets past him. Um, you know, he was a big part well, of... Maybe maybe like 35%. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> for, 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 for any player though, like 64% is, yeah, is, is very, very good. You know, and he was a big part of the reason why the Wanderers were such a, a pain to play early in the season because you just couldn't break them down. And, and he was the player really at the heart of that and, and that caused that and yes okay their defensive performances have dropped off a little bit and I've spoken what on... I will say on Marcelo he was not in the squad for the 7-0 mm. so that is a tick in his column yeah well and and I think that one of the problems with him is is it's a mental thing and he's trying to do too much at times um so you know I don't think that it's necessarily that he's bad it's that he's just trying to do too much but you know we've spoken about um you know his his threats uh, in the air but on the ground as well with the ball at feet he's pretty good he's got an 89 percent passing accuracy he's the sort of player that, that can progress the ball quite well so that's what i've got him in just penciled in ahead of De silver all right I, i'm happy to lean with marcelo are we all in happy with that Take yeah happy with that. all right all right uh let's go to left back now my standout straight away here is jacob farrell i think he's been a standout for the mariners he's one of the first names on their team sheet 
He's good at getting forward on the wing when he's required to, as we talked about earlier. He's also played more defensively in a back three and relying on his progressive passing, which he's also quite good at. Do we have any challenges for Jacob Farrell on the left? Uh, I'm going to put Garuccio's hat in the ring um, because I think that Garuccio takes what Farrell does and and I think in in some facets does it a lot better. Um, he's got much better passing stats than Farrell. He's got a higher accuracy percentage. He has more key passes per ninety minutes um, than Farrell does. He's got he's better at you know dribbler as well. Sixty two percent successful dribble rate versus forty eight for Farrell. Um, Farrell's a little bit better defensively, um, a bit more traditional in that sense. Um, but they both are about equal in in terms of the number of recoveries and the number of possessions one per nine. So I've put Garuccio's hat in the wing, but I think I'm probably going to be outnumbered here and, and Farrell will get in ahead of him. <laughs> Farrell has also mastered the dark art of winning the free kick. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you, for you've it. forgotten the most important stat is mind games won on the field. Yeah. And <laughs> Farrell is the league leader. I'm going to go with Garuccio as well. Oh, wow. Because okay. I've gone with the Mariners right back, as we've mentioned before. So I'm going to go with Garuccio for a bit of a mix-up. Okay, mm. evening out the teams a little bit. Well, shall we... Uh, Lean towards the uh, podcasting fraternity then and go Ben Garuccio. Oh, that's stiff on Jacob Farrell, though. That's very stiff. Yeah. All yeah. right, I'll begrudgingly uh, allow Ben Garuccio, uh, even without his full complement of teeth, and uh, we we'll, we'll <laughs> might see if Jacob Farrell makes the bench. Let's go to right back. Now, I think this is a tricky one. I don't think there's a standout performer here, and the players that we're going to name are very different roles for their team as well. So we have uh, Payne uh, for the Wellington Phoenix. He's... Defensive numbers probably aren't comparable to everyone else's, but he is a very key link to how the Wellington, to how the Phoenix set up moving forward. Jason Gary has been also asked to play a few different roles. He's been inverting in midfield, which probably wasn't super natural for him earlier in the season, but he really came alive, particularly in the derby in the weekend. Lots of good midfield runs, earned the penalty as well. Josh Risden was probably one of the more consistent performers for Western United over the course of the year. Uh, we've managed to. Uh, snag Mikel Docker into a position and we picked right back. He's played a lot. He's been a big utility player, so maybe that works against him here. And then, Jacob, you have one other nomination as well, which I think is a little bit of a stretch, uh, but will allow you <laughs> provisions of the uh, SA Great campaign. Yeah, I'm sure Antonis will appreciate this. Uh, but I've said I've, I've said Giuseppe Bovolina, and uh, hear me out on this, right? He's 19 years old, and as of the 15th of March, he had the second most direct attacking sequence involvements of any defender in the league. So that's shots and chances created. Um, he's got a goal and two assists on the season, but that doesn't really do justice the work that he does in attack. And then you consider that he's on the side of the pitch with Aaron Kunda on it. So he has a lot of ground to cover <laughs> defensively as well. And there he's excellent. 62% dual win rate, which is pretty much on par with Marcelo. He's won 27 tackles this season, 1.6 per 90. Now, this is a bit of a reach, but Ben White for Arsenal has 0. 0.7 per 90. So okay, he is, all right. He's we're, more we're than stretching double the Ben White pretty thin defensively. Now. Ben White hates football. That doesn't count. <laughs> yeah. Bob Alina might be good going forward, but I think Adelaide, could, Adelaide United conceded a lot of goals during that period of time that you might be talking about. Will, is, is there a standout option in that list for you? I think Doka has been the, mo the most clutch player um, and kind of added the most from that right back position to his team. So I, I am going with Doka, yeah. Thank you, Christian? Will. Yeah, Doka as well. I'll put that wow, in because okay. he's really versatile. So I think that works to an all-star team advantage where, you know, he can play in a couple of different roles. I know right back isn't his sort of set in stone position, but I think he's been brilliant. You know, two goals, four assists, probably doesn't do him justice with the, the work he does bombing up. So yeah, I'll have Look, Doka. I think I think you're right. He has been great, but has he been great at right back? Mm -hmm. And Jacob, yeah. I'm probably leaning towards Garrier or Risden as as one of my yeah. Picks. I agree with that. I, I think both Payne and Docker have that that you know little bit of trouble in that they've played on the wing a lot as well. They've you know been very attacking. I think Payne's even played in the midfield. Docker's played all over the place. So yeah, I'm with you in leaning towards. Uh, honestly, I'd probably take Jason Garrier over Josh Risden. I think that. Gary has just done a little bit more for victory this season um, than than Risden's done, but uh, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. Yeah, look, Gary, um, Andy Harbour has been whispering his name for a Socceroos shirt as well, so that's a little bit of praise. Uh, Will or Christian, are we willing to 
bend a little bit. I don't know, because Gary is basically a midfielder now, as you said, so that's pushing as well. <laughs> no, but he lines up at right not. back out of no, possession. No, that's no, what no. it really counts. I'll take Gary. I'll take Gary. I like he's been he's been just super solid this season. Yeah, when he's in the All team, right. he's different. Honestly. Jason Gary in at right back. Christian exasperates <laughs> um, the midfield. I'm, sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm I'm going to insist that we pick a defensive central midfielder, and I think uh, for me, I'm going to give an honourable mention to Hamza Saki, who left midway through the year. I mm. think he would be in this spot yeah. if he was still here. But Alex Rufa, for me, has been the standout at the six this year. And I'm going to go with the other midfielders straight away because there is a lot of quality in here. I'm talking uh, Anthony Casera, Sinazim Mashash, uh, Zach Cloth, Uli Davila, who's missed out on my selection. I think that's very rough on him. But my midfield three is Tolgai Arslan, Josh Nisbet, and Alex Rufa. And to be honest, I don't think there's a whole lot of wiggle room there. I'm I'm pretty happy with that as as a midfield three. Arslan I think has been the best number ten in the league all season long, and if anybody's picking anybody over him, it's in, you, you know you're insane. I'll put Zach Clough's name down there just because I think he you know he's he deserves a little bit of recognition for for the season that he's had, but it, you know he's not a, a Tolga Arslan who's been dominant. I say Nisbet gets in as well. I think you know there's not really been that sort of number eight or box to box midfielder that set the league alight this season. But Nisbet's got that versatility to play a few different roles there, so I think that sort of gets him in. Plus, he's in great form. He's got a ton of assists. He's starting to get on the score sheet now as well. So he gets he gets that. Rufa is a good shout at DM. I did have J O'Shea there. Um, but, you know, I can see the, the call for Rufo and also O'Shea. He only really has played half the season as a defensive midfielder. The other times it's been more central. But, you know, I think either way, you know, I'm happy to go with, with your selections there, Lockie, um, with Arslan, Nisbet and Rufo. Yeah, it's basically the three I had. Plus, I was thinking as a shout was uh, was Pena because he, he just feels like an all-star player. Um, but, yeah, it hasn't had the form maybe to match the others um, in that trio that you named Lockie. So... Happy with Nisbet. I had the same, but I had the Villa ahead of Arslan just because they've got roughly Ooh. the same stats. It's just the Villa, I think, has been, I don't know, just that's had more impactful, you know, just off the ball as well, like I mentioned before. He's a leader. I just think oh, I'd be harsh to get him out, but Jeez. I see Arslan. But between, a- between that statement and Jacob going on about Bovellino, <laughs> we're going to get absolutely rinsed for being uh. way too stats focused on these selections. I'm going to be honest, I think Tolga Arsenal is the best player in the league. He won't win the MVP because he was suspended. Uh, and look, Davila, as I said, I think he is the, the next name up, but there's just been such quality in that position. I think Arsenal and Nisbet get there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can't put You're out Nisbet. Right. Nisbet's been the best player in the league, but, you know, arguably along with, you know, a couple of others. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's 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 go striker first because I think this is an easy conversation. Obviously, honourable mentions to Adam Taggart, uh, Stamatolopoulos, Costa Barbarousas, we kind of pegged in at striker. He could be on the wing as well. And Valerie Germain, all quality players. But Bruno Fornaroli, two four-goal bags on the year, missed uh, four or five games with the Asian Cup and is still leading the golden boots. Does anyone even dare? Okay, Taggart does it in a worse team. How about that? <laughs> a wooden spoon team, I think that does add a lot to to his efforts. He Taggart just creates out of nothing so consistently, like, I don't know, but I'm happy with Fornaroli. He's smashing the goals per minute um, stat when he's missed his couple games. But yeah, as you said, still leading. So no, nah, I think it's it's pretty obvious for this one. Yeah, I, I think I do th- I will admit I think Taggart is the clear number two. Mm. But I think there is daylight to Fornaroli. We're all agreement there. Yes. Yes. Yep. Well, well let's do right wing. Now the two names we have here, I think Look, Nestor Iran Kunda, we all rate him. We've talked about that before. But if we're considering overall season performance, I don't think we can go past Joe Lolly, mm. Christian. Yeah, I had Joe Lolly as number one. I think nine goals and seven assists, and he's just been really integral part to that Sydney um, attacking third down, you know, that right-hand side. So, I mean, he creates a lot. I think it'd be really harsh to keep him out. All right, all in agreement? Yeah. Yeah. All right, and then the final position is left wing. Now, this is a tricky one because I don't think there is too many standout performers that have distinctly stayed on the left. Um, Angel Torres, we've talked about, took a little while to get into the year and then has set the league alight when he got going. But I'm going to throw in Ben Old. He's been kind of left midfield, if you want to call it that, for the Phoenix and a lot of their setups. 
But the young Kiwi player, Jacob, I think he's been outstanding. Yeah, I think the pair of them have. Old and Torres have been very good. Old, I think, plays a little bit deeper. You know, Torres likes to lead the line a lot and get forward very early, whereas Old gets involved a little bit more in, you know, sort of the build-up side of things. And that's just, you know, the vagaries of the two systems that they play in. And um, I think that they're both quality players. If you just look at stats, and I know we've said, you know, we're going to get ribbed <laughs> on for this, but, you know, Ben Old, five goals, three assists. It's a, it's a decent return for a young winger. Torres has 13 goals and three assists, which is just, for a winger, is an absolutely insane return. But like I said, they're playing sort of different roles out there. It's a really tough one. I mean, my suggestion is move Aaron Kunda to the left, but that's out of the question. <laughs> um, I, I, I went with Torres ahead of Old simply just for the, the return that he's got, but I can really see the benefit of having Ben Old there because he's been a quality player for, for the Phoenix all season long. Will, you were nodding your head at Torres? I think Torres is... Yeah, Torres makes sense for this all-star team. Um, it's it's. I know Ben Old has been fantastic, but he is in that system. He's a system player, but you want the you want the electricity for these all-star teams, and I think Angel Torres just brings that. And, and yeah, the flair, just match-winning goals. That that much output from, from, from wide is, is, yeah, you can't ignore it, really. All right. I, I did have Ben Old as my number one, but I'm willing to bend on this position. Christian, are you happy with Torres as well? Yeah, I've got Torres. I'm on the same page as Will with the productivity he'll provide in the All-Stars and just his stats. You can't look past him. All right. There you go. Starting 11 locked in. Paulson in net. Garuccio, Caltech, Marcelo and Geria. Roofer at the six with Arslan and Nisbet. Then Torres, Bruno, Fauna, Rolly, and Joe Lolly. Now, the other part of this, we'll get through this really quickly. Uh, we need four un- other under-23 rising stars. We're going to make this real simple. You get one each uh, to join as the kind of the, the youth of the team. We've got a few already, but we're going to add some more. Will, I'm going to go to you first. Okay, well, I'm taking Aaron Kunda. I think these games are set up for, you know, to be a platform for, for these young players. Um, I know he's already got to move to Bayern, obviously, but... You just want these players as an advertisement for the league, really. You want them playing against Newcastle. So, yeah, take Aaron Kunda. He deserves to be in the squad. Jacob? Uh, oh, this is a tough one. I'm going to go Ben Old. You know, it, it was harsh to leave him out. He's been a, a quality player all season long. And, uh, you know, I think he deserves the spot. Christian? Go with Nicholas Milanovic. 13 goal contributions. He's been, I think, still relatively underrated this season. I don't think, you know... More, I think more people should be talking about him. He's been, yeah, really impressive, um, especially down in wide areas, creating a lot. Um, yeah, just a really exciting play. And I think he'd, um, yeah, suit well into this side, even, you know, coming off the bench. So, yeah, Milanovic. All right. Well, I had Jacob Farrell in my original team. I'm a little bit sore that he didn't get in, uh, but he's going to be my pick as well. Uh, as I said, I think he's been outstanding this year. I want to give some honourable mentions. Uh, Rafael Borges Rodriguez at MacArthur. Ryan Teague for Melbourne Victory as being a regular starter in central midfield. Jordan Courtney Perkins, Finn Sermon in defence as well. Jacob, you touched on Giuseppe Bovolina. And then the young Jet as well, Clayton Taylor. Almost had a hat-trick against the victory mm. earlier in the season. Definitely a standout performance. Well, uh, I hope you enjoyed that. So that's our All-Star team. We want to know what you think as well. So, yes, what do you think of our All-Star team? What would you change? Do we get anything wrong? Uh, let us know for sure.